Hi, this is Jim Starkweather with the Kitmaker Network, and we've got a cracking the box of a new Meng model just out. This is the Messerschmitt ME410B-2-U4 Heavy Fighter. Um, this is part of their new series, the 148th uh, scale long, long step series. Um, and so this is uh, numbered, attributed, or attributed. Uh, where is the number? Anyways, I believe it's something like L something 001, but I don't see the number on the box, so uh, it's here somewhere, I'm sure. Uh, how embarrassing. Well, Meng, next time remember to put your model number on the box. <laughs> so um, let me take a quick look here just to... Yeah, here it is. <laughs> I had a feeling it was correct, but here's the instruction manual where I pull everything else out. Uh, LS001. So this is their first uh, 48th scale um, release, I believe, in that in that the way they do their series. So let's quickly just go pull out some plastic here. We've got two sprues of uh, this one, which includes obviously the propellers and some of the engine uh, cowling detail, the wheels, uh, I believe, um, some internal engine detail maybe. Um, then we have uh, another sheet uh, again, some. Some more kind of bits and pieces, various things, and uh, then we have the uh, some of the cockpit detail, um, some other little small some gun details, and so forth. Sorry, I'm not holding that where you can see it. Right, I'm trying to look at it. Uh, and then we have some of the wing detail, lower lower wing looks like, um, upper wings. And the fuselage itself on this one. And then uh, a small piece, which actually, hmm, it's not normal for them to have it open, but uh, there we go. A small piece that's uh, easy to access. A lot of their stuff is actually, uh, some of the stuff I should say is in these uh, resealables, which is kind of nice. A very large decal sheet. And a clear plastic. Actually, there's two clear plastic sheets sets and finally a photo etch so I'll go ahead and get this set up I'm going to show you more detail hi and welcome back so um, I've got my uh, setup here a little bit better now for showing you in detail some of the photos here's the the lower wing again um, some of the wing detail here uh, the panel lines look look very very faint and uh, let me see if I can get a little closer so you can see um, really what uh, kind of detail they really do have up close. So you can see some nice rivet detail there. Um, and uh, not, like I said, panel lines not too strong. Yeah, getting too close there. So um, it looks like Meng's done a pretty good job on that. Let me go back to where I was. Go back to here. All right, so um, here's uh, some of the flaps. Um, I believe, yeah. Um, actually, no, those are, I guess those are maybe the ailerons. I'm not sure. I'll just go look at the manual. I don't have to do that. Uh, some of the, again, lower engine cowling detail there. Nice. Move on to the upper wing. Nope, that's the fuselage. Get it right here. So um, I'll just kind of keep going through all these. I don't... Uh, not an expert on this this plane, um, and probably some of you are saying, "Well, Jim doesn't even build planes. He's the armor guy." Well, that's not technically true. I have built planes, but not a, not very very recently. Um, and actually, I've flown a plane. So my stepfather had a, a twin engine Beechcraft Baron, so he used to take me up in that back in the day when I was young. Wanted to give me pilot's license or pilot lessons, but idiot fourteen year old said, ah, "I don't want to learn how to fly a plane." What, what kind of person doesn't want to fly a plane? Uh, well, let's just chalk that up to youthful experience. Um, wish I had done it now. So there's the upper wing detail. Again, looks very nice. Um, looks like Meng uh, must have done their homework on the kit in terms of research. Unless they just made up stuff. But, <laughs> but it doesn't look like it. Here's the, uh, the fuselage, the forward section there. Um, going along the forward section. To the back, some of these lines look strong but I think once you've you know painted and so forth they're gonna be a lot less so and uh, some of the small detail parts here 
including little little bits like that. And moving on, here's some of that cockpit detail. And um, let's see, I'll get a closer shot in there for you on that one. So I'm gonna get in closer and I'll just hold it up. So you can see some of the equipment, instrumentation detail. Um, not sure what these are. Lines, probably brake lines or brake lines. Uh, hydraulic lines. Well, technically planes probably some have brakes. <laughs> Uh, again, some detail here. I think some of the gun detail, I'm guessing correctly. And uh, more little fiddly bits. There's some of the other cockpit detail. I want to get to close up there. The I believe that's probably the floor pan. I'm guessing with the seat mount there. And again, moving on. Here's some other. Bits. We'll have a full uh, blown review of this. Obviously, I think Rowan wants to do it, so uh, it may take a little while to get over the ocean and then into his little hot hands, but he will eventually get it, and I'm sure want to probably even build it eventually. But uh, here's again some of the some of the detail. You can see some nice rivet detail there. Oh, here's some. Uh, I think probably rear wheel maybe. And uh, segues right into this one, which is the, the one that has two of these. And there's the main wheels. Phoenix Habug. Hmm. And uh, there looks like some kind of blower. And there's one of the nose noses for the propellers. And here's the propeller itself. bits and then I believe these are some of the engine detail not sure maybe they have uh, look, take a look at the manual see what kind of uh, exposed areas they have looks like obviously the engine would be one and obviously the cockpit um, and here's that uh, small piece that we saw earlier didn't have a was not sealed maybe this was a late addition and um, this plane comes with a 20 mil, uh, some kind of cannon on the front. I'm guessing like a 20 millimeter cannon or something. That's probably the cannon. Let me let me go back to that since I did kind of rush through that. So there's the uh, the cannon. You can, oh, it's got some nice uh, muzzle detail there. I don't know if you can see that very well, but um, and then uh, actually done this part. And uh, the nice thing about their their uh, clear plastic um, is that it's actually double wrapped. They've got it in plastic and then they've got a plastic, um, another plastic layer over it. So I'll try to be careful with this and not touch any of the parts that we'll be using. So here's the front, the forward cock, the forward uh, windscreen detail. It's pretty nice. And uh, not sure where that one goes, but that looks nice too. And then we have the larger piece here. Oh, this may take a second to get undone. Uh, and then we have more side cockpit, I think, or side glass. And then there's a piece, obviously, as a removable section. And uh, more. So, all looking good there. And then here's the photo etch. Safety belts and such. Obviously produced for this release. And finally, the, the decals, or as Rowan will say, the decals. Um, interesting. This is obviously going somewhere. I think that's intentional, where that little kind of angle or little circular bit is missing. Same thing, I'm guessing, with some of these other parts. And uh, these are cartograph. So, 
So they have the, um, interesting, the star. I'm guessing that this was used post-war. So again, let me take a look at the instructions. Um, take out one of my boxes here. And, uh, out of focus. Um, take a look at the instructions here, which you can see um, from the start. Um, some, you know, kind of overview information. They go right into a step-by-step. Um, and uh, this cockpit, obviously, putting together the cockpit, more cockpit, uh, fuselage, the uh, 20 millimeter cannon. So they do include things like the, the, the loading area or the auto loader for the cannon, probably. Um, there's that engine detail. So again, yeah, the, I'm not sure exactly how those components you know, would, you know, we would expose those, but they potentially would be just unbolted, I guess. Um, so yeah, lots of little nice detail that they're including here that you won't have to uh, do separately. The final bit is uh, there's a parts overlay, um, and then they show different uh, Germany 1944 camouflage scheme. Um, this is, um, I guess it was being tested by the Soviet Air Force. They spelled Soviet wrong, I think. Um, in 1945, so that's why those uh, Soviet, I thought the Red Star markings were odd. Uh, so the Soviets obviously tested this uh, craft after probably capturing it. And um, again, tested by, it says tested by Looks like NLL, v VVS research in something, can't read, of the Soviet's Air Force between 1945 and 1946. So, anyways, uh, to conclude, um, looks like a nice kit. Obviously, um, we'll again passing this on to uh, Rowan for further review, so stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, you get this little video preview.